Finally, a car update that doesn't make me look like a complete idiot. It's been one year since I purchased my 2000 Mercedes ML55 AMG, and there's been very little drama during that time. The ML55 was the first SUV to be breathed on by Mercedes in-house tuning company, AMG, and it really is pretty cool. It has a great looking body kit with fender flares, classic looking AMG five spoke wheels, and a fantastic 342 horsepower 5.4 liter V8 engine. I found my AMG for sale by owner on autotrader.com in the Chicagoland area and really like the odd paint color called Bourbon Metallic. He was asking a reasonable $5,000 but described it as needing tires right away and he was selling because he bought a newer Audi SUV. In a rare moment of rational thought, I asked for a pre-purchase inspection before sending over the cash. He agreed to take it over to a Mercedes shop which told me, including tires, there was about $5,000 worth of work needing to be done. Ouch. I'm sure the seller thought I was going to ghost on him with that $5,000 repair quote, but I knew this era of Mercedes really well, and it can tell the difference between actual issues and sane pricing. We agreed to $3,500, making it probably the cheapest AMG sale in Auto Trader at the time, and I spent another $500 having the car shipped back to Kansas. I was pretty happy with its first impression. Unlike my other purchases, it didn't refuse to start or catch fire on arrival, but it did need some work. I happily sent it up to my trusty car wizard, David, for some refreshing, and we ran into a problem when it came time to find tires. Except for some pricey Pirellis, nobody was pricey Pirellis, pricey Pirellis, please. Except for some pricey Pirellis, nobody was producing this unusual tire size anymore. Rather than pay over $1,000 for tires, I opted to buy a cheaper, more common size that was a bit larger. The other real issues with the AMG are very common with this era of Mercedes. People love to call these things the Alabama trash can since they were built in the United States and had some quality issues early on. But they're actually built really well. The few minor problems these things have are easy fixes. I wanted to get a little more technical with this video, so I crawled underneath to show something that was fixed, but the heat in the cramped quarters made me act a little strange. All right, I'm gonna show you some stuff while I'm under here. A little bit of a tight fit. It's up in there. Yeah, there, there. See it? No, don't see it. There, it's foil. It's wrapped in foil. That's a plug. That goes bad. Yeah. I'm dead. Oh. Oh. Oh, please. Anyway, what I was trying to show you was this little plug that connects the transmission to the control computer. They have a tendency to leak, allowing training fluid to flow down the wire. My ML55 was doing this, which if neglected for too long can result in the shorting out of the transmission computer or the conductor plate inside the transmission. As mine was caught early, it was a much easier fix, just $100 more than a normal transmission service that you would do since you're dropping the transmission pan. Wait, did I just say something intelligent? The other big issue noted with my pre-purchase inspection had to do with the power steering, which I was told the power steering pump and the steering rack were both leaking. As I suspected, the steering rack was total BS, as these racks like to seep a little as they age, but never enough for a drop to hit the ground, and they stay like that forever. The power steering pump leak, as I suspected, was fixed with only a $3 seal. In between the power steering pump and the reservoir is this little seal that if fails, it can kind of look like the pump itself is leaking. It takes maybe 20 minutes to change this little seal and top off the fluid. The dealer wanted almost $2,000 to fix all of this. Ridiculous! They also wanted to replace the brakes since they were rusted, but the seller insisted they were new. Turns out he was right. The ML had just been sitting for months and had some corrosion built up on the rotors, which was knocked off pretty quickly with regular use. There are a few other common problems this era of Mercedes tend to have. This one didn't have it, but I've listed that in my article at autotrader.com slash oversteer, which is linked below. So if you're shopping for one of these, give it a click. 
With the fresh service, tires, and repairs, I only spent about $1,400 to fully sort out this Mercedes. And with taxes and insurance over the past year, I have about $6,000 into this thing. In the past year, 7,000 miles has been put on it, and it's been totally reliable. It hasn't needed a thing. The only dumb part of this video is that I've decided to sell this reliable SUV that I really like, but I think it's time to move on. If you're wondering what's coming in this place, I've actually already bought something, and it's another high-performance SUV I picked up really cheap. This time, it was totally sight unseen, purchased in Florida with no mechanical inspection. I'll unveil it sometime next week when it arrives, but feel free to guess in the comments in the meantime. I'm pretty sure I'll be able to get my $6,000 back out of it, which means I got to drive this high-performance SUV for a year for free. But before I list it, I need to fix something. Somebody must have wanted a Flava Flav style necklace and yanked off my oversized grill badge. I'm gonna pop this thing back on before cleaning up and taking some sale pictures. This should shut up all the people who say I don't work on my own cars. With no mechanical inspection. I know, true to form for me. Oh man, trying to improv something, you know. Hey, yeah, I'm gonna be really loose and improv right now. Okay, woo. All right. So, come here often. If you're wondering what it. Bad.